Good morning, welcome to Good Shepherd. Welcome to Church Online. Welcome to worship. Today we have a beautiful worship service prepared for you. And before we get started, I would like to welcome our guest musician, Nancy Cliff. Thank you, Nancy, for being with us and for providing your gift of music this morning to our congregation. Now, let us begin with a word of worship. Let us begin with a hymn. Let us begin singing. And I invite you to sing our first hymn. The name of that hymn is, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Please sing with me. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet the walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning. arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, say and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. One more. Our fellowship leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning. Yes, we are leaning on the everlasting arms. So we are bold to say, God is with us all the time, all the time. God is with us. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I would like to invite you to confess our sins together as a church, as believers, confessing before God and one another our sins. Please repeat after me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice in God's grace. Let us rejoice in God's forgiveness. Let us rejoice in God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord with those who you have at home. Share it here in the chat if you're watching live. If you're watching later during the week, share the peace with us. We are here still in the peace of the Lord. And if you're by yourself at home, look at the window and say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Because from right here, from Good Shepherd, I'm saying back to you and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now I would like to share the prayer of the day with you. The prayer of the day, we are using the African-American hymnal, the ELCA, This Far By Faith, a lovely hymnal, powerful hymns, powerful prayers, and this is the prayer for today. Let us pray. Lord God, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses. Grant that we may preserve in our curse, course that is set before us to be living signs of the gospel and at last with all the saints to share in your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I would like to take a moment to thank uh, the team and those who make this worship service possible. This church online is possible because of a small team of folks that we have here at Good Shepherd who are recording with the phones, with cameras, who have lights, and prepare this whole service so you can watch it at home. Thank you so much to the team. Thank you for those who made this service possible. And thanks to you who are watching right now. Thank you for sharing this service with those you know. Thank you for being a missionary, an online missionary, a digital missionary. Who would have thought that now you and I are able to share our faith right here and right now. Thank you again for your support. Thank you for your offerings. Thank you for sharing. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to listen to God's word in today's lessons.
Today's gospel comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. And this is the good news for us this morning. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, but the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, truly you are the Son of God, is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to your church from our Lord Jesus Christ this Sunday. Before I begin, I would like to share again uh, the name of the lady who did the TED Talk that I mentioned last Sunday. Last Sunday, I was preaching a sermon. In my sermon, I mentioned a TED Talk. The name of the woman who gave the TED Talk is Lucy Hone. Lucy Hone, H-O-N-E. Like home, but with an N instead of an M. So that was last week, that, that sermon was about grief and being able to overcome what it's hindering us and when things don't seem to be clicking our way, breaking our way. That was last week. Today, different Sunday, different sermon. Today is how to deal with uncertainty. Yes. Today's sermon is what's next? How to deal with uncertainty. What's going to happen? And then the answer is, I don't know. What's going to happen with COVID-19? I don't know. Are school going to be open in September? I don't know. Am I going back to work? I don't know. Am I going to find a job? I don't know. We live in uncertain times. And no one seems to know anything. When I got COVID-19 early in April, I went to the doctor online, had my Zoom appointment, and I said to the doctor, doctor, what should I expect? How many days I'm going to be sick? What's going to happen to me? And you know what he said to me? You're right. I don't know. It depends, he told me. It depends on people. And I said, but doctor, I'm sick and I see on the news what's going on. I'm worried. I'm anxious. I want to know. I want certainty. I want a path forward. 
I want to know what's going to happen next. We don't know. We don't know and we are in a holding pattern waiting to see what's going to happen. But at the same time, there are things that cannot wait. I think that mass happened. There are people who have doctor's appointments that mass happened, surgeries that mass happened. There are people who are going to meet the maker this week, people who are sick and have fought the good fight and now are about to die in faith and cannot wait. There are people who are being born right now. Yes, today there are women delivering babies at the hospital right now, and that cannot wait. So how can we move forward in a world of uncertainties? How can we go on when we don't know what's ahead, when we cannot see the future, we cannot see what's going to happen? What can we do? I was inspired to give this sermon to you, dear church, this morning out of the lesson that we heard from 2 Corinthians, where Paul, writing to the Corinthians the second time around, so if you didn't get it the first time around, you're not alone. The whole people of Corinth, the church in Corinthians, they needed a second letter from the apostle. And he's trying to convey his message to the Corinthians, and he's trying to bring clarity to uncertainty. And the apostle says this powerful word, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. We walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't matter that you cannot see the future. It doesn't matter that you cannot see what's ahead. We don't walk because we can see. We walk because we have faith. We don't walk because we can see all the potholes and all the cliffs ahead of us and the struggles. We walk because we have faith. Faith in the pothole, faith in the struggle. We don't walk before we can see the danger, because we can see the waters, because we can see the trouble. We walk because we have faith. Faith that we can see the struggle. Faith that we can see the water. Faith that we can, you know, have in the danger time, dangerous place. So it is faith, and by faith alone, very Protestant, very Lutheran, by faith alone we endure, by faith alone we move on, by faith alone we carry on. And yes, if you think that this sermon is just a pep talk, and say, well, big deal, just lifting up the spirit, just pep talk for the troops, but at the end of the day, Pastor, you talk about faith. What's faith? What's faith when I'm sick? What's faith when I'm unemployed? What's faith when I'm in pain? What is faith when I am alone? You say by faith alone, okay. But what is faith? Those of you who are part of this church and who are watching, you may remember that I preached about that a few months back. I can't remember. I preached about the definition of faith, the only definition of faith that you can find in Scripture. It's in the book of Hebrews, or the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. I preached about it about, I don't know, seven months ago, eight months ago. You can check it out. You can uh, bench watch all my sermons in this time and go back and track it. Let me know when you find it. Let me know when was it. But months ago, in this last year, I preached a sermon about faith. What is faith? And I mentioned that the only definition of faith is in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. And I invited you to memorize it. If you did, if you memorize it then, or if you know it by heart from before, I invite you to put it in the chat. What is faith? Put it in the chat. Hebrews 11, 1. Put it in the chat. Let the world know that you know what faith is. 
For faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. Say it with me. For faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. We walk by faith, not by sight, says the apostle, because we have an assurance of things hoped for that are going to happen, they are going to break our way, a conviction of things not yet seen. Let those words hang in the air for a second. If you have to have another sip of coffee, please do. The conviction of things not yet seen. You cannot even see it. But you have a conviction of things that not, are not yet seen. That's the faith that I think you have to have nowadays when you cannot wait for these uncertain times to clear up and you need to go and you need to do and you need to walk and you need to get it done. As I mentioned, if you're delivering a baby today, it is happening today. You may don't know how, but it's happening. And maybe you're driving right now, packing your stuff and driving to the hospital right now. Maybe you're appointed to be induced today. It's happening. And you have the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of, not, of things not yet seen. But you're going to see your baby by the end of the day. And someone will be born today. July 19th, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this world, in the midst of this uncertainty, someone's going to be born. A brand new baby. What name should we give someone born today? What name will you give a baby born today in the midst of this? No one is asking me for baby names, but let me share with you my top two picks. If you have a baby boy today, I would suggest to you to name him Abraham. I know, it's old school. But if you are having a baby, maybe you're from the Gen X generation, uh, and you're cool. You're a millennial maybe, you're cool, you can bring Abraham back. You can have baby uh, Abe back. Why do I say Abraham? Because Abraham believed by faith. Abraham, back in the day, beginning of the story of the people of God, God said to Abraham, Abraham, you got to go to a land that you don't know, but I'm going to give to you. Where is it? Don't worry about it. Start walking that way. That's it? Yes, that's it. You just go. And Abraham obeyed by faith, obeyed God's calling to go to a place to receive as an inheritance, knowing, not knowing where he was going. Abraham did not know where he was going, but he knew that God called him to go. And by faith, by faith alone, he went. Not because he could see the promised land, but because he believed in the promised land. Not because he could see the destination, but because he believed in the one who sent him there. Are you listening? Not because you can see what you're hoping for, but because you believe in the one that sends you there, that walks with you, that it's with you, that it's your God. When we say a good shepherd, that God is with us all the time, all the time God is with us, we mean it in any time. When everything is going your way and when things are not going your way at all, when things are certain and when things are uncertain, we believe. So if you're having a baby boy, I encourage you to look at the name Abraham to evoke that faith. If you're having a baby girl, you've got to go with Sarah. 
You gotta go with Sarah because she believed too. She believed that she will be the mother of generations of whole people. She believed that she will be pregnant. And Sarah was old. And I know that it's not appropriate for me to be talking about women's age, but according to scripture, Sarah couldn't have babies. She couldn't have babies when she was young. She couldn't have babies when she was an adult. She couldn't have baby when she was old. And she had her baby when she was really old. Really, really old, as old as Abraham. And she conceived because she believed. She believed in an assurance of things hoped for. She wanted to have a baby. And she believed in the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. The conviction of things not yet seen. You cannot see it, but it's there. You cannot see it, but you know it's on the other side of the mountain. You cannot see it, but you know that it's there. A dawn will come, not in the middle of the night, but a dawn, a little farther down, it will come to you. So we carry on as people of faith, people of faith who walk by faith and not by sight, who understand faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. So whatever it is that you're going through right now, and I know that we're going through a lot, whatever it is that is bringing you trouble, is it health? Is your relationship? Is work? Maybe your children? Maybe just fear of the change that we see in the world? Maybe it's loneliness after all these weeks and months? Maybe it's death? Whatever it is, whatever it is that is ahead of you, I invite you to carry on. And I know that you cannot see the future. I know that you cannot see what lies ahead. But I invite you to hold on to the faith in the one who walks on water, and the faith in the one who conquered death, and the faith in the one who we call Jesus, Savior, Redeemer, and Light of the world. The gospel today is Jesus walking on water. Famous gospel. There are a couple of variants in the gospels. In Matthew, we have the unique add-on of the interaction with Peter. But long story short, the disciples go ahead on a boat, wind, storm, waves battering the ship. I like that line, that was battered by waves. An analogy, an image of the storms in life, the waves that come to your boat, the struggles, the winds against you without Jesus. Jesus is on shore. Surrounded by water, what to do when you're sinking on a boat in the middle of a body of water? If your struggle is a storm, if your struggle is a ship and a storm and a body of water, you're kind of stuck there. The smartest among us will say where uh, water is uh, H2O. Okay, that doesn't serve much in a storm, on a boat, in a body of water. Someone with insight can say, well, we can uh, freeze water, we can evaporate water, we can redirect water. All right, again, not too much help in the middle of a storm. And sometimes we get stuck with our own solutions, so with our own approaches to find a solution. What to do, and we offer ideas and we offer solutions, but at the end of the day, a lot of times we know that we don't have the answer. A lot of times we know that we cannot see the answer. 
A lot of times we get frustrated and suffer because we feel that we have no power. We have no options. We are stuck on a boat in the middle of a storm and there's nothing that we can do. We're stuck in pain, stuck in trouble, stuck in adversity, stuck in uncertainty. Today's gospel teaches that Jesus has a different set of options. Today's gospel teaches that Jesus has a different set of tools at his disposal. Today's gospel teaches that Jesus is the Son of God, is the Son of God, the Son of the living God, the Son of the one who is to come. So what does Jesus do? He just walks on water. He just walks on water and tells you, hey, you come over and you walk on water with me, said to Peter. I can imagine poor Peter thinking, why did I think about that in the first place? Why did I think about walking on water? Well, you did, Peter didn't think about walking on water and you may not think about walking on water because Jesus has solutions to your problems that you cannot see. Jesus has solutions that you cannot see. Jesus has solutions to your struggles that you cannot see because they are beyond your realm of possibility. Not only for Peter, but you can see it in the gospel over and over and over again. Actually, the story right before this gospel, in the gospel of Matthew, the story right before Jesus walking on water was Jesus feeding the 5,000. Remember? Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus, and I preached about that also a few weeks back. So we're looking at 20,000 people, you know, 5,000 men, women, and children. Let's round up 20,000. He fed 20,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. What would you do with five loaves of bread and two fish and 20,000 people to feed? Most likely the same thing that the disciples did. And throw your hands up in the air and say, we cannot do this. I don't know much, but I know math. And five plus seven is, does not equal 20,000. Got to go. Someone else got to feed him. But it's Jesus who finds a way to break, to bless, and to give, and 20,000 people were fed. Jesus has solutions to your problems that are beyond what you can see. But Jesus can see it, and Jesus can do it. it. Happens all the time in the Bible. It happened to the man who was sick, 38 years sick, not 30 years old, not 38 years old, but 38 years sick. He was sick for 38 years, and Jesus found him in front of the pool, a pool that was supposed to be miraculous water, and he was trying to get in the water, but couldn't get in the water. Remember that story? In sickness, a pool with magical powers. All you need to do is to get into that pool at the right moment. And Jesus said, you know what? Scratch the pool. Forget the magic water. Pick up your mat, get up and walk. Right now. In the moment. Right now. Poor guy, 38 years, being sick. I wonder, he thought, why didn't I think about that myself? Just pick up my mat and walk. Because Jesus has solutions to problems that you cannot see. Jesus has access to solutions that are beyond your realm of possibility. But Jesus has them for you. Like the woman caught in adultery. And I love this story. The woman caught in adultery. You know why I like it so much? Because scripture tells us that she was caught in the act of adultery. And they bring it to Jesus. Everybody, you know, fired up in rage. And they say to Jesus, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Yet the woman was alone. I don't know with who they caught her with, but that person wasn't there. They only bring the woman. 
cut in the act. And they said to Jesus, Jesus, we're going to stone this woman to death. What do you say? Now, if that's not a struggle, if that's not a storm, I don't know what is. Not only facing death, but I think that that story of the woman caught in adultery is a story that speaks to us who are carrying secrets and things hidden. And we're afraid of being caught. We're afraid our secret will be made known. And Jesus in the gospel kneels and write something on the ground. The gospel doesn't say what he writes. It just says that he gets on the ground and writes something on the ground just for him to read, just for him and the woman to read. What did he write? I don't know. It's not in the gospel. But I imagine, I hope, I think that maybe he wrote the same thing he said to Peter walking on water. Maybe he wrote on the ground the same thing he wants you to hear today. Maybe he wrote on the ground something not for everybody to know, but for you to hear, for you to see. It's the same thing he said to Peter on the, walking on the water. Do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid says the Lord, it is I, I'm here, I'm here with you. I know you cannot see, I know you cannot walk on water, I know you cannot save your life of this mob, I know you're sick, I know you're hungry and worried about your provision, I know you're anxious, I know you're struggling with depression, I know you have an addiction. I know you're lonely. I know you're heartbroken. I know. Do not be afraid. Hold on to me because I can see. I can see solutions. I can see possibilities. I can see change. I can see salvation. I can see the promised land. I can see where you're going. You're going with God. You're going with the one who is and will be. Because when there is our certainty, God puts provision. When there is worry about your body, God puts health. When there is secrecy, God puts grace. And when there is fear about life itself, God puts life everlasting. Do not worry, dear church. Do not worry. Stay with the Lord. Walk by faith. Walk by faith because God can see what's next. Amen. Now, let me invite you to sing our next hymn. Our next hymn is Be Thou My Vision. my 
soul after victory won. May I reach heaven, joy, so heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision. O ruler of all. Now in this faith, in the faith in the one who is God, who is Savior and Redeemer, I would like us to have a moment of prayer together. As a church, as people who believe. So if you're watching live, I invite you to pray with me and to please share with me the names of those that you would like to lift up in prayer. And if you're watching later during the week, I invite you to add your prayer to our prayers. So together, this prayerful community can bring our prayers to God as incense before him in faith, in hope, and in love. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. We give you thanks because we are still here. We give you thanks because we still walk by faith. We give you thanks because we're still fed by your hand. We give you thanks because we have been healed. We give you thanks because we have been restored. We give you thanks, Lord, because we have been forgiven. We thank you. Father Almighty, for our daily bread that you never failed to provide. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, Savior and Redeemer, we pray for all those who are struggling today. We pray for all those who are sinking in the waters of this life, drowning in anxiety, we pray for those who are sick, Lord, especially those in the hospital and those with COVID-19. We pray for those who have troubles in their minds, in their hearts, in the spirit, who are struggling with addictions, struggling with a broken heart, struggling with loneliness. We pray, Lord, for all those who have financial struggles and wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. We pray, Lord, for all those who are in pain. We pray for all those who are anxious. We pray for all those who have a heavy heart. We pray for all of us who cannot see but believe, who have assurance of things hoped for, and the conviction that you, Lord, will provide, will heal, will come. Lord, in your mercy, Holy Spirit, breath of life, we pray for all churches, all denominations, all those who call you by name. We especially pray this morning for our denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and our bishop, Bishop Elizabeth. We pray for our synod, the New Jersey Synod, and our bishop, Tracy. And we pray for the churches in Florida, for the churches in Texas, for the churches in Arizona, that together we can stand in witness to love one another, to care for our neighbors, to heal the sick, to worry about the wounded, to stand in solidarity with those who are struggling the most. Lord, in your mercy, in this faith, in the faith of the adulterous woman next to Jesus, 
in this faith, in the faith of the sick man next to Jesus, in this faith, in the faith of the over 20,000 people who ate by Jesus' hands. We come to you now, Lord, with our own prayer in this moment of awe and holy silence. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, God, we commend all for whom we pray because we trust in your word, because we trust in your promises, because we trust in the prayer that you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us sing our next and last hymn. All creatures worship God most high. God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing, brother, sun in splendor bright. Sing, sister, moon and stars of night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All who for love of God forgive, all who in pain or sorrow grieve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ bears your burdens and your fears. Still make your song of mid the tears. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sisters, brothers, take your part and worship God with humble heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All creatures bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And as a good friend of mine likes to say, may God bless you real good. See you next week.